There is a growing body of evidence suggesting that activation of a pregnant mom's immune system due to sickness can sometimes cause problems for her baby's neuro neurological development. A major focus is on how this activation could lead to autism, and it's explored by a new paper published by Kayla Chennault of Harvard uh, University in the journal Nature Neuroscience. In the United States, around 1 in 54 children have autism spectrum disorder, which is characterized by difficulties with interpersonal communications, social skills, and repetitive behaviors. There is no cure, however, behavioral and social psychological therapies can be very helpful. Autism is four times more common in males than females. The causes of autism are unclear, and they are likely an interplay of genetic and environmental factors. More specifically, triggers including exposure to certain pathogens or irritants are thought to lead to autism-like neurological disorders. However, the exact changes are uncertain. Animal or cellular mod models are used for most molecular, genetic, and neurobiology projects, as it's generally highly unethical to do such experiments on a human fetus. The figure created by Zengler and Lukens in the perspective published alongside the research paper provides a visual overview of the study. I'm going to highlight different parts at a time. The research team used a mouse maternal immune activation model, and they injected pregnant mice with polyIC to mimic viral infection or saline as a control. Using single cell, re single cell RNA, sCRNA seq sequencing on the cortices of embryos from both cohorts, they found significant changes in transcriptional states and protein regulation across cortical cell types. Here's one of the interesting key findings. Even though maternal inflammation causes altered proteostasis in the fetal mouse brain, it impacts males to a much more significant degree. Specifically, their sCRNA-seq data showed that male mouse fetuses and mothers experiencing inflammation had downregulated ribosome subunit synthesis and corresponding decreased levels of protein synthesis compared to the saline controls in the female and their female counterparts. EIF2-alpha, or the eukaryotic translation initiation factor 2-alpha, is a key part of the integrated stress response, which, when phosphorylated, blocks translation to protect a damaged or threatened cell. As shown on the figure, the authors observed elevated levels of phosphorylated E. IF2 in the brains of the male mouse fetuses exposed to maternal inflammation, as well as activation of, of the associated kinase PERC, which acts as a sensor for endoplasmic reticulum stress. In a previous paper, the group reported that IL-17 alpha, sorry, IL-17A produced by maternal T cells after exposure to poly IC is intimately connected to disruptive neurodevelopment and autism-like behaviors. Only humans can be diagnosed with autism. However, impaired sociability and repetitive behaviors are analogous autism-like behaviors in mice, as shown in the figure. The question still remains, why are female fetal brains exposed to maternal inflammation so resilient? Employing RiboSeq to sequence ribosome-protected mRNA transcripts, the team found that females had upregulated synthesis of alternative translation initiation factors and chromatin remodeling proteins that act as protective mechanisms to counter the integrated stress response cascade. In a final elegant experiment, the researchers bred EIF2-alpha mutant fathers uh, who have a blocked integrated stress response with wild-type mothers who were treated with poly-IC or saline. Fascinatingly, the male offspring exhibited neurotypical development and behavior. Similar results were observed in the integrated stress response inhibitor, SRIB, rescued male offspring who had been exposed to maternal inflammation. And these male offspring exhibited neurotypical development and behavior as well. So what does all this mean? So firstly, it's important to note that just because certain results are observed in mice doesn't mean that they will apply to humans who are vastly different organisms. So this paper's findings should be interpreted at face value, not as cause for concern. Many mothers get sick during pregnancy and give birth to completely normal and healthy babies. Instead, this paper is best viewed as a jumping off point for promising future investigations in mouse models. For example, to mine the vast amount of specialized sequencing data collected for this project, as well as identifying key factors leading to resilience against autism in female mice. 